up after the break as cybercrime becomes a real threat singapore is launching a new agency to mitigate that risk yeah that's right we'll be speaking with john ellis director of enterprise security for apac in japan at akamai technologies he'll be here in the studio with us that's coming up next well, moving on, Singapore launches its first ever cybersecurity agency today. The new bureau aims to protect national systems from cyber threats and an increasingly interconnected city. After the massive fallout from Sony's hack attack last year, governments and corporations have been recognizing the need to beef up their digital defenses. To talk more on that very issue, John Ellis, Director of Enterprise Security, APAC and Japan for Akamai Technologies, joins us here around the desk at the SGX. John, welcome to the studio. Great to see you. Thank you very it's much. Very Early hour, brave of you to wake up to come and talk to us. <laughs> Speaking of brave, uh, you know, we uh, are witnessing an unprecedented amount of hacking that's ongoing around mm. the globe, particularly targeted actually a, a lot of places in the U.S. Um, you know, the Singaporeans are setting up this agency here today. Uh, you know, why are they doing this? Is it because there's a bigger threat in the region for cyber attacks? Well, the threat landscape is evolving dramatically and this is a recognition of the challenges that government and industry is facing. So there is a lot of focus in being able to work with the um, industries and the markets to be able to address these threats. So when you speak with uh, the governments and um, different individual businesses, whether public or private, what are you finding that perhaps the biggest oversight is or the biggest mistake that they're making in terms of not protecting themselves enough? Well, a lot of organizations um, just don't focus on the fundamentals. So there's a lot of pursuit of looking at advanced technologies. Their businesses are expanding rapidly. They're adopting innovative technologies, utilizing the internet. But they tend to forget the fundamentals that they should be focusing on, such as the information, what's of value to them, what's of value to the adversaries, all that sort of good stuff. Okay, so with the fundamentals, information that's valuable to them, Correct. they need to protect that with even more layers of, of defense. Cyber defense, well, and, and how do you go ahead and go go about doing that? Well, I like to talk about cyber resilience. So the concept really is that you know you may actually experience disruption to your businesses or unavailability of data because of DDoS attacks, whatever that may be. But you want to put yourself in a position where you can adapt and respond and recover to these situations. Mm -hmm. You can never achieve perfect security. That's, that's not possible. So we do talk about defense in depth, actually the layering as you just described. But you also need to understand where your data is, who has access to that data, how is that data actually protected. Um, and there's a number of things like this that organizations really just aren't focusing on. And these companies, they need to beef up the layers of defense, at least as a first sort of uh, plan of action in order to prevent any sort of cyber attacks, never mind dealing with it once it happens. I mean, is this a costly affair for companies in general today? It is. So if you look at the numbers that are um, being talked about the, um, by the analysts out there, so in 2014 here in Asia, we saw about 8.3% 8 of IT budgets allocated to security, and that's going to increase this year. Um, and that's up from 5.6% uh, in 2013. So more money is being spent, but we definitely do see more um, security events happening. So you've got to ask the question, right. we're spending more money to try and solve this problem, but more incidents <laughs> are actually happening. Yeah, yeah. that's sort of the catch-22. It's sort of like the dog chasing the tail, right? It is, right. it is. Yeah. Um, John, you know, one of the issues that is really frightening to me is not so much hacking of businesses, but energy security and food security, in essence, cyber terrorism. Mm. Let's say some cyber terrorist gets a hold of the water supply in, in a country. Um, so much of energy infrastructure right now is run on software and stored in the cloud. Mm. I mean, how do you protect against that? I come back to cyber resilience, right? Yeah. I mean, so this is a real threat, you know, cyber terrorism. Uh, so there's a lot of commentary about this at the moment. It's quite a timely topic uh, where people are talking about critical infrastructure, as you rightly pointed out. It's being connected uh, to the global grid, you know, with the internet. We refer to this as integrated control systems, operational control systems. Uh, you, these organizations need to be thinking about, okay, how do we detect and respond and recover to these incidents? Um, there is no silver bullet in all of this. And we can't ignore the fact that we still want to be innovative with our technology. That's just, a, that's just you know, mankind, right? We, we want to keep growing. Exactly. 
Well, I mean, in, in Europe, it stated in the Internet uh, Q4 report in 2014, you illustrated, uh, well, you pointed out that, you know, the various countries that are responsible in terms of the source for hacking, mm -hmm. China, of course, uh, clocking in at number one, although dropping to 41% from 49 so it's a mild improvement. <laughs> uh, you know, it's going how in the right direction. It's going in the right yes, direction. Right? And you can't happen overnight, right? But, That's I mean, right. how much more work do you think that China, well, clearly the Chinese need to do a lot more work, right, mm -hmm. on this front? Well, China's an interesting situation, right? You just simply have to look at numbers. Right? So you've got about 642 million people online with so many connected devices. Sure. So if you're running a criminal organization, China represents a unique proposition to you because China also doesn't have extradition treaty with a lot of countries. Mm -hmm. So you can turn around and leverage a lot of this infrastructure which you can compromise. You know, you have mobile phones, you have the PCs, you have the cloud infrastructure, all that sort of stuff. And you compromise these systems and then use that as a launch point to actually conduct your attacks. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see. So it's not necessarily attribution. We don't talk about attribution per se to say, you know, we see 41 percent of the attack traffic originating from China, that doesn't necessarily mean it's the Chinese behind that. Ah, okay. It could be passing through China. Correct. It's oh, okay, systems. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Fascinating conversation. John, thank you so much. John Ellis of Akamai Technologies here in the studio with us. So Pauline, uh